Hello everyone, I am Varnika Gupta from Your Story and we are back with the CXO Diaries hosted by NextGen and VMware in association with Your Story. Through this show, we bring together top decision makers of growth stage and large enterprises in India who are building sustainable work cultures and are scaling businesses. In today's episode, we are going to talk about Pharma 4.0, the journey from digitization to digitalization. Please join me in welcoming the speakers today. We have Sriji Gopinath, Chief Information Officer at Lupin Limited, where he leads the end-to-end -end IT and digital portfolio of the company. Sriji has over 20 years of significant domain expertise and global experience. Prior to joining Lupin, he was with Reckitt and has also been associated with companies like Philips, PNG, ISRO, and Asia Brown Bovary. We also have with us Vaibhav Tiwari, co-founder and CEO at Portia Medical. Webhub has more than 20 years of extensive experience in building new businesses across industries such as healthcare, business process outsourcing, technology, and supply chain management. He's also actively involved in coaching and mentoring entrepreneurs and senior executives and, is all, and also serves as the board of director, advisor, and mentor for many fast-growing companies across internet, retail consumer, and technology verticals. We have with us Mr. Shiva Padmanabhan, MD and Head of Global Technology Center of AstraZeneca, India Private Limited. Shiva is a member of AstraZeneca's Golden IT Leadership Team and the Board of AstraZeneca India. Shiva has an experience of 25 years in healthcare and information technology, and he has spent first half of his career in the North American region, where he worked with organizations like PwC, Fortune 10 Healthcare Major, McKinsey Corporation. Siva is an engineer and holds a master's degree in business administration in the Institute of Management, Bangalore. And finally, we have Saragur Srihari, Head of Digital Transformation at NextGen. Srihari has 28 years of experience in plant management, general and operation management roles, spanning CPG, automotive, and business process solution across product and services companies. At NextGen Data Center and Cloud Technologies, he heads the digital transformation services. Prior to this, he was Global Head of Digital Supply Chain and Transformation Services at Sutherland Global Services. A warm welcome to all of you. My first question is to Mr. Sriji. Uh, why do you think it is important to digitize the pharma sector and how is, uh, how is it different from digitization? And how do you think the pandemic has impacted the business? Uh, thank you, Vanika. Uh, thanks for having me in this session. Really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so why do you have to digitize pharma sector. That question can be applicable to any sector. Um, and, uh, you know, just like any other business, we have our growth path so far and we have ambitions of growing uh, in the future as well. When you're a small business, probably it is not that critical. But when you become a large business and, it, you know, uh, and if your ambition is to becoming even more larger, there is a, a, an imperative um, that you need to do this with as automated processes as uh, you know error free and as efficiently as possible. <clears throat> and we all know when you know when we do business in that kind of a scale, like uh, the companies that I am representing or you know other other panelists are representing you need to be able to um, rely on automation uh, as much as possible to do uh, the, the processes that we are dealing with. Now, uh, pharma, uh, traditionally, we all uh, know that it might have been a lagard, but not everywhere. Even in that case, you know, I have seen that in pharma, there have been you know, pockets of excellence in terms of adopting technology over the past decades. And now there is very, very clear buy-in uh, from the leadership of the pharma sector in different companies that this is not a choice anymore. Uh, why? Because uh, that is what the market demands. That is what the consumers demand. That is what the customers are demanding. Um, so we need to be able to connect with our doctors, patients, distributors, suppliers, on, and all the other ecosystems. And they expect that kind of agility and efficiency from our side. Similarly, when we <clears throat> when we talk about uh, you know um, the the other partners involved, then whether, whether it is regulators, whether it is government, whether it is safety oriented uh, you know partners that we have, <clears throat> it is all uh, that ecosystem 
uh, that that is demanding for us to go after uh, digitalization. Now, how is it different from digitization? So it's in, in very simple terms, if you think about it, you know, it, it is about converting uh, analog signal to a digital signal. So for example, if you convert an old CD into an MP3 <clears throat> format, that is digitization. That's what we do when we uh, implement technologies in different areas of the business, whether it is front end sales uh, and marketing CRM related, or whether it is manufacturing related PLCs or laboratory uh, information management systems or whatever, you're basically uh, converting that manual data recording to a electronic uh, form of data recording. That is digitization. That is a prerequisite. If you don't do that, if you don't have that data in the digital format, uh, by going through the digitization journey, then you cannot get into a digitalization phase, which is about uh, you know actually transforming the processes. And by transforming processes, you uh, for, on one hand you could probably create new revenue streams, uh, new ways of engaging with your customers and consumers, or you know create a better way to run your manufacturing line with better yields. Uh, make sure your lines are not breaking down as frequently as. It used to be that there is a proactive maintenance mechanism. Uh, enable your operators and your uh, maintenance personnel to do their work by using technologies like, uh, you know, AR, VR, or you know, digital twins. So that's the kind of digitalization that you know the sector is going through, and you know it's a very very exciting phase. Um, now, where does this lead us to? This is actually going to lead us through to the actual the the, the phrase that we all hear, which is digital transformation. That is much more than just digitizing or digitalizing. <clears throat> it's about actually transforming the way we conduct ourselves, our business, and influencing the culture of the organization by building the capabilities as well as the mechanisms to you know, use technology and the digitized data that we have and the analytics that comes out of it to positively influence the, the business processes and the business outcomes. So, so that's what uh, you know. That's what digitize, digitization and digitization is about. Um, I think you also asked how did the pandemic uh, impact uh, the business. Um, I mean, of course, we all know every business has been impacted one way or another. Every person or individual has been impacted in one way or another. Um, so, so uh, having said that, uh, for, as a CIO, uh, one positive thing that I, that has happened is that. Um, this has definitely given a boost uh, in terms of realizing what technology can actually do uh, in, in, in helping businesses to be run better. Um, so that is the one positive thing that has come out of it. And it has definitely accelerated the digitalization journey and the digital transformation journey. And we are starting to see early results because of that. Um, so, I mean, the negative impacts, I don't think I, don't think I need to talk about. Everybody knows, knows about it. Uh, but this is a positive outcome the pandemic has resulted in. Thank you. And building further on digital, digital transformation, Weber, my next question would be to you that, you know, you're at Portia, you're acquiring uh, patients through both physical and digital channels. So what kind of uh, technologies have you invested in and how have you seen them evolving over the years? So uh, a <clears throat> few things just to take uh, take from where, uh, where Shriji was talking about. So if you look at, uh, and if uh, for everybody's benefit, Portia is India's largest home healthcare services company. So of course, we we reach out to the patient's homes uh, uh, outside the hospital. It could be their homes, it could be uh, their offices, and of course, support them with all the healthcare services. Also work with a lot of pharma companies uh, uh, to basically support their uh, patient connect programs and patient support programs. So what has happened actually, if you look from uh, look from a from a consumer behavior change perspective, and I'll come to your point of where we are using technology. So I think uh, if you look at from consumer behavior perspective, I think pre-COVID and post-COVID, there has been major change where customers and consumers are a lot more open to, uh, to uh, basically exploring healthcare services online, consuming healthcare services uh, using digital media, and of course, being connected with them, uh, the whole patient engagement programs, they're a lot more open to uh, doing that digitally. So the way we operated in this first five to six years of our existence was a lot more around being on the ground with the patient, a lot of uh, support programs, a lot of uh, supervision, a lot of other services. Everything happened mostly in the physical form, right? But what has happened in last year, year and a half, is that we are seeing uh, as the change in the consumer behavior has happened irreversibly towards adoption of digital, 
we are also seeing what can be done to uh, to provide healthcare services to patients in a uh, in a hybrid model basically what is called uh, digital right so you have a combination of uh, of uh, having services of course healthcare services have to happen on ground right so that has to be there but the whole uh, uh, it has to it can be completely driven completely aided by technology so earlier in our model of course our technology included uh, having a having a, a clinician app so all our clinicians who are going to patient homes so are using a mobile app and all the patient data patient case files their appointments their whole whole efficiency eff effectiveness parameters are all tracked by uh, by using that app right now what has happened in the in the post covid scenario is that the whole uh, the whole uh, service delivery is happening in a hybrid model so now today what happens is that before a clinician is going to the patient home uh, when he is reaching there the what we call the assessment right the first uh, when we do go to the patient home and do the assessment of the of their need that happens along with the video consult from a sme Uh, by a sme uh, from the from the head office as well right so now the whole thing is completely changed so earlier the clinician was at patient home doing the service you collecting the data collecting the uh, case files and and basically uh, analyzing those and seeing what next to do here what you are doing using digital technologies there you are running it lot more real time than ever before right so it has basically uh, so the the in basically the digital technology in this has become very all pervasive actually same way how patients are accessing uh, uh, basically uh, their services how they are talking to us all the results become lot more digital than than ever actually right so that's again something which is which is which has changed other big change which we are seeing and implementing right now is that in uh, in healthcare the wearable devices play has increased significantly so now patients are lot more open given there's a there's a there's a real scare of saying that if i don't take care of my health and wellness and if uh, god forbid another uh, uh, disease like covid comes you are a lot more vulnerable right because all the people who had underlying conditions comorbidities are a lot more prone to uh, suffering severely during covid right so patients are a lot more open to taking care of their health and that's why using devices to monitor their health as well as collect data on a real time basis and act on it with a with a with a clinician and physician at the back end has again improved significantly there's a lot of demand lot of pull from the market uh, for that so if you see now the earlier uses of technology was lot more about running your operations well not technology is a lot about how you work with the patient how you basically engage with the patient how you collect data with them on a real time basis and of course when you collect data how you can uh, how you can take care of the treatment plan in a much more effective manner and then of course ongoing basis given their data which you are collecting what other support services you can provide them what other uh, Uh, ailments you can support them uh, with uh, not only for the patient as well as for family members so i would say that uh, that post covid especially the the uses of technology has become into every realm of of the patient uh, patient interaction now absolutely and uh, astra janaka has a long standing commitment to delivering sustainable health care what can you tell us about it and what kind of ecosystem partnerships tech and innovation are you doing to ensure that you are supporting communities uh yeah that's a great question um so um if you look at uh, the world today like uh, the, the whole esg theme right environmental sustainability and governance is a key criteria for companies around the world in the way they prioritize their investments um throughout the the company including the digital transformation uh and 70% actually of the healthcare companies uh around the world actually in the recent survey it shows that they see a very strong link between esg and uh, strategy and, and and digitization and digitalization right so so that's a, a really key, a key theme around the world and, and no different when it comes to astrazeneca uh, for us um, uh, a digital plays a very key role uh, in three themes around what we generally call sustainability uh, one is access to healthcare uh at uh, the other is environmental protection and the third one is ethics and transparency so those are the three major uh, pillars from our perspective um so if you just look around the world today right if you look at uh, what the world health organization has recently said uh there are 150 million people who lose their life too early 
from some sort of non-communicable disease. Um, they are called NCDs, non-communicable diseases, which could be things like diabetes, it could be blood pressure, high blood pressure, hypertension, and so on and so forth. Um, so this situation is disproportionate also in the poorer countries around the world, right? In terms of the amount of uh, loss um, to human, human life uh, and these societies as a result of these NCDs. And for us, Seneca, this has been a, a constant theme is how to find opportunities to accelerate digital, to positively impact um, the patient experience. Um, around the world, right? Um, in, in, in various ways and digital and digitalization, digitization has opened up a lot of possibilities uh, around things like telehealth, around things like digital health, personalized health, et cetera. Uh, that really is going to hugely help healthcare systems around the world. So what we are doing is we have a number of partnerships both locally within India and also globally. Uh, to, to drive this agenda forward. One of them is uh, our engagement with the World Economic Forum and the London School of Economics in the Partnership for Healthcare System Sustainability and Resilience project, um, which, is a, which is a major uh, you know, global level thing we do. And in addition, we also have uh, what's called A Catalyst, which is really a network of innovation, healthcare innovation around the world in 20 plus countries. Uh, and when you talk about healthcare innovation, it's really an open innovation framework, right? So it's basically about bringing together not just corporates like AstraZeneca, but also academic uh, partnerships, um, partnerships with startups, uh, partnerships with governments, uh, both local governments as well as state and national level, uh, to really bring together uh, the best of what technology and innovation can offer to improve the patient experience. At the end of the day, the objective is always about improving the patient experience. So if you look at, for example, locally in India, we have several partnerships. One is with the NASCOM Healthcare Innovation Group. Uh, it's with IIT Madras, for example, and also Business Sweden, which is um, a body associated with the government of Sweden to further um, healthcare innovation. So it's not just in India, but in many emerging markets, we are coming together with startups um, and with tech companies to really promote uh, overall healthcare and the uh, and the benefits for the patient. Absolutely. And uh, Shri, if I can come to you and uh, ask that, you know, so much talk about uh, digitization and new technologies that are evolving the pharmaceutical space. How do you think that the uh, uh, next gen is making this process seamless for the pharmaceutical companies? Uh, before I respond uh, or answer that question, uh, Vanika, you asked me for an opening statement. You asked us for an opening statement. Let me give you an anecdote or maybe uh, sure. this um, relevant trivia, if you may. Uh, I was told by my mentor, Dr. Mark Bonsek, many, many, many years back, there used to be a doctor by the name of uh, Ignaz Semmelweis in Austria in 1840s. He actually did a lot of study and came to the conclusion that hand washing reduces uh, infection or reduces diseases. Till that time, uh, typically uh, bile or mental problems were only considered two medical reasons. Why would anyone be sick? What we would call in our uh, local language, pitta. If you have pitta, if you have bile, you have problem or uh, heat, right? Grandmothers used to say that. He was sent to, his peers sent him to an asylum saying that he was crazy. 20 years later, Louis Pasteur came, Dr. Pasteur came and said, there's a bacteria-based infection, wash your hands, and he became famous. So what Dr. Semmelweis said 20 years back, put him into an asylum, the, what Dr. Pasteur said, won him recognition, okay? So mental model, creation of mental model is very essential in today's world for any transformation to be uh, successful. I just want to leave you with that. Uh, what was your question? If you may ask me a question again. I, uh, yeah, so if I, I was asking that how is uh, NextGen making the process seamless for pharmaceutical organizations? That, you know, do we need external experts to implement Pharma 4.0? Okay, a uh, very relevant question and something that NextGen is focused on. Uh, reason being, uh, we believe that with analytics, whether it uh, be big data or small data or little data, and for that matter, all the relevant enablers, AIs and so on and so forth, the concept of ontology is very, very relevant, where you create something specific towards uh, an entity, towards relationship, the role the entities in the relationship play. 
So our analytical framework uh, for uh, any uh, industry is based on the, the uh, ontology of that particular domain. I'll give an example. For uh, if you say, if uh, I were to talk to uh, doctors uh, and say, use the term CA, right? And I go to a chemist, I go to a, a chemistry uh, professor and say CA, they have two different meanings. One for the doctor is probably cancer, CA in short form is cancer. For the chemistry professor, it probably be calcium. So we can't use the same uh, reference model for uh, uh, different domains. So our, uh, our uh, analytics based framework is ontology based framework which is specific for the industry where we create the relationship, we create the entity, we create the role uh, and as well as the resources required towards uh, solving the business problem. So that's something that we are looking at. The second aspect of it is we are focused on augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, specifically in the post pandemic sp space, if you take pain management, uh, one of the reasons why we are in the space is because of uh, a personal bias towards pain management. Uh, we are looking at AR, VR to help in, uh, in, uh, in solving business problems as well as healthcare problems. Uh, pain medication is uh, on an all time high. It is becoming a, an epidemic by itself. So we believe using AR, VR, uh, we can help in reducing the uh, help in pain management as well. So that's something that we are focused on. Of course, the other thing uh, being uh, IoT uh, in terms of production, in terms of production analytics and so on and so forth, uh, which um, uh, Shriji spoke about is extremely relevant uh, today. And that's something that we are focusing on as well. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, Weber, uh, building on uh, what Shriji was saying about you know, AI and predictive analytics, how, what is your view on it? And how is that, uh, how is that technology uh, powering the uh, So uh, uh, what we are looking at from AI perspective, of course, for us, the most important thing right now, as far as the analytics is concerned, is about uh, how basis the patient conditions, the basis the data which I'm collecting from a, from a patient's condition and, uh, and how I can analyze that and how we can look at all the requirements which they have from a, from a healthcare need perspective, right? So that's part number one. Part number two is that what they need to do as their treatment plan going forward. And then of course, how do I track uh, their treatment against that and make sure that they have uh, uh, some predicted outcome after that. So if I am uh, if I know that this is a condition they have, if I'm creating the treatment plan for them to, to recover, are they, are they uh, work, uh, is the plan working against that and how the patient is recovering and is there a way to predict the outcome actually? That's something which, has, uh, which is the most important uh, as far as the analytics part is concerned. Uh, AI, of course, uh, can be used in a lot of uh, operational ways. I mean that we uh, we work on uh, uh, we work on uh, uh, clinicians going to patient homes uh, and treating them and doing multiple visits in a day. So, of course, how do you solve the traveling salesman problem in a particular area where you can use technology for that? So, I think that's there operationally how we can how we can run it better. But uh, from a uh, from analytics perspective, the most important part is basically to look at patient condition. And how technology gets used to uh, to uh, provide them the best possible treatment. In uh, other way, otherwise is uh, is AI working very well in uh, in basically uh, predicting treatment plans? That is still uh, the jury is out there. I mean, it's not it's not proven. But there's something where technology will play a bigger and bigger role as we go along. Sure, uh, Sriji, uh, coming back to you, you know, you spoke about the importance of data and. Uh, Day, everything is revolving around data, but how do you think, how secure is it? And how is the pharma sector prepared to handle personal data? And more importantly, how are, uh, uh, how are you ensuring that, you know, you achieve the flexible and maintainable integration of IT systems for data-driven pharmaceutical manufacturing? In, in everything that we do as individuals or as organization, you know, uh, this has always been something which was taken very seriously. And we continue to take that very seriously, right? We are not handling data for the first time. Data has been handled in ERPs and you know other applications that we use. And data was important at that time as well. It had to be secure. It had to, it had to be used properly. It had to flow from one system to another system. It, it is uh, made available for compute or analytics or whatever it may be. In my opinion, uh, that doesn't change much. You know, apart from the fact that there are a little you know a little bit more emphasis on advanced analytics. Uh, the likes of uh, 
the, the statistical models that we build, usage of AI and ML technologies uh, to, to get uh, uh, you know, predictive outcomes and uh, prescriptive outcomes. So the way we are using data is slightly different compared to the past. But the principles that we employ to make sure that you know, the data is secure, whether it is personal uh, data or whether it is company data or whether it is something else that is residing in our system, that uh, is, is, is of utmost importance. We follow the strictest protocols uh, when it comes to that, whether it is using, whether it is exchange, whether it is you know, uh, providing the info to the partners. You know, even then we have mechanisms to make sure that the partner does not misuse, right? So that uh, doesn't change. Now, in terms of making sure the data exchange uh, between the different systems is taken, gone are the days we just uh, use a FTP protocol and uh, exchange the data, right? So we make sure that there is enough emphasis on uh, safe uh, passage of data from uh, one system to another, one organization to another, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, here we are talking about the ecosystem where there is patients, doctors, distributors, suppliers, vendors, uh, manufacturers, service providers, a whole lot of people in our ecosystem. And we make sure that, first of all, all the critical uh, and confidential data is marked so and it is controlled in uh, in 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 uh, you know in strict ways before it is uh, made available to any stakeholders that uh, need to have that right uh, and that that kind of protocols are very much there and in my opinion the digitization journey or the digital transformation journey is not uh, just bringing uh, us uh, that importance now it has it was always there and it will continue to be so Absolutely. Uh, what are some of the trends and technologies you feel will play a critical role in shaping the sector in India in the coming future? Yeah, there is a, 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 a quite a number of trends. I mean, it's, I think one of the most exciting spaces that uh, we see here is health tech, right? I think, uh, of course, uh, you know, we have fintech and we have other very exciting fields also, but I'm really, truly excited by the potential um, that we have for technology in healthcare both from um, large pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical companies, um, healthcare delivery systems, um, insurers, all of these participants are actually you know, going through this massive transformation that technology is able to bring uh, today. So if I, I, let me talk about a few trends across the whole value chain of a biopharmaceutical type of company. Um, you know, right in the beginning is about how do we find new uh, drugs, right? Uh, new uh, potential new drugs that we can then trial and we can bring to the market. Um, so human genetics is really uh, exploding, right, in terms of the ability for us to personalize the medicine, uh, the ability for us to, you know, interpret that genome, uh, which gives us absolutely new avenues to discover new drugs. So AI, artificial intelligence is augmenting, is, is augmenting the drug design. So traditionally, you know, it is very difficult and a long process to find new molecules because you really have to uh, search very wide. Uh, you have to do that manually, and then you have to trial various things. And today it's really possible to virtualize a lot of that, uh, use big data and AI to really find the most potential molecules in a much faster, right? So that's a really big one on the drug discovery side of things. Now, if you look at drug development, right, to bringing a, a potential molecule through the clinical trial process and into, into approvals, uh, today we have advanced electronic health records in many parts of the world. Uh, many countries have adopted this, and that really gives us a very, very digitized way of uh, enrolling patients for trials, finding the right patients for trials, enrolling them, uh, capturing the data that comes out of these clinical trials, analyzing that data very rapidly, and personalizing the whole clinical trial experience to uh, individual patients. So on the, on the development side, um, also, as I said, is, this, is, this is hugely uh, beneficial. Now, if you look at manufacturing and supply chain, right? So smart factories, um, is, is really coming to the fore where we are able to use digital technologies to improve uh, overall equipment efficiency, reduce defects, um, and, and make sure we have timely product launches. We also have technologies such as control towers today, which are able to take in a lot of external information of what's going on in the supply chain. Are there any risks in the supply chain? Are there any transportation issues? Are there any disruptions due to natural causes? All this is possible to look at it 
from top down 30,000 foot view and quickly make um, adjustments to your supply chain as a result of all that data and technology that's available. Uh, going into the future, manufacturing is also going to be personalized. So if you look at things like cell therapy, it's really individualized manufacturing for a single patient, right? So you're potentially taking, um, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're taking uh, input that comes from patients, processing it in the cell therapy, in the manufacturing setup, and then putting it back on the patient. So those types of things are personalized manufacturing. It requires hyper-connectivity. It requires zero defect. So it's really a batch size of one when we think about uh, cell therapy. So all these things are evolving very rapidly. Now, if you look at the, uh, the commercial side, right? Once a drug reaches the physicians and the patients, today we have uh, the, the whole promise of real world evidence, which means that you can really look at all of the data that's been accumulated over the years on how patients have responded to actual treatments, uh, what kind of side effects were there, adverse events were there, uh, what kind of effectiveness uh, was there. So you can look at that whole thing in a completely different uh, different light. Uh, and that then allows us to really uh, find new candidates, uh, new, candid new, new conditions, new therapy areas that uh, an existing drug can be used, for example. Uh, and then omnichannel is another big uh, advancement when it comes to patients as well as healthcare providers. So today we are able to get a single view of uh, a physician, right, uh, from a pharma side of all the interactions they've had, whether it be telephonic, whether it be in a conference, whether it be via email or social media, uh, all of this can come together and give a 360 degree view, right, of uh, both the healthcare provider and the patient. Um, so that's another uh, tremendous opportunity that, uh, that we see. Uh, and then finally, when it comes to India, I think India is on the cusp of actually leapfrogging uh, various developed nations with our national digital health stack, uh, the Ayushman Bharat digital mission, right? And through the adoption of uh, electronic health records, um, really, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an ability for us to really fully leverage the potential of all this data and digital advancements in the future. Uh, with, with this kind of framework that uh, we've introduced in India. Uh, again, uh, telemedicine is a huge opportunity as well in India, given all the uh, disparities we have in terms of the number of physicians and specialists that are available, but also the fact that India is rapidly digitizing. Uh, almost everyone has a mobile phone or, or a large majority have a mobile phone today and 5G connectivity coming on board. All this is going to really truly accelerate uh, the ability for patients to access the healthcare system, you know, much more seamlessly, much uh, with much less friction for much less cost, uh, which is then really going to explore uh, the opportunities that's available and the, and the value that patients can generate uh, through that. And then of course, there's the devices, the wearables that uh, today uh, the patients have that's able to harvest rich amount of data. Uh, the watch that I'm wearing, for example, can do ECGs, you know, it can do SpO2, it can do heart rate, it can do so many things. And all that's now really going to make um, a 360 degree view of the patient uh, possible. Absolutely. Uh, Srihari, what is your view of the emerging trends in the healthcare industry? So yeah, I'll start with my own, uh, uh, my own case. I am a type 1 diabetic and I've been wearing uh, a medical pump, uh, insulin pump for the last uh, 15 years, right? Uh, I used to go to the doctor once a year uh, annually and show him my uh, my record and uh, be done with it. In those days, there was no, uh, there was no concept of uh, uh, digital records, right? In the last year and a half to two, uh, I send my report out digitally. I send my uh, my uh, the digital glucometer readings on a on a six months basis to him. He comes back, makes me adjust my insulin, and so on and so forth. So if you look at it, that's that's what the transformation is today, where the doctors are online at any given point of time, and the content. I mean, uh, uh, we have Vibhav as well. He he probably can add to it as well. The content of uh, of the uh, of the platforms uh, that uh, that uh, are specific to a customer or customer specific to a patient in this case is very important. So in terms of trends. Uh, variable devices are there. Uh, I've been using one for the last 15 years, but that has changed. If my insulin uh, the, uh, insulin uh, uh, rate goes up, I get a call from the doctor uh, managed by the uh, device manufacturing company to say, 
why is your uh, insulin high? Uh, would you want to go to a doctor and so on and so forth? So the contextual relationship with the patient is very, very uh, uh, passe uh, today. It is there uh, in terms of uh, what the customer, what the patient wants and what the doctor is looking for. Uh, and I already alluded to the trend uh, of virtual reality. Uh, we are seeing an uptake in the virtual, re virtual reality based, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, wellness programs uh, in terms of uh, pain medication or in terms of uh, other uh, ways of looking at it, uh, training patients on how to wear wearable devices, uh, whether it be insulin pump or it could be uh, other uh, devices that are there. So augmented reality based uh, LMS or learning management solutions uh, are there. Uh, we all have spoken about AI uh, and the big data analytics. Uh, I'm specifically referring to my own uh, way of looking at things which are specific to domain ontology based uh, uh, AI uh, platforms or frameworks uh, that, are, that are available. Uh, one other thing that we have seen an uptick uh, is on the blockchain strategy, especially uh, in the medical field in uh, EHS, employee health uh, uh, records or EMRs, uh, we have seen uh, an uptick in the uh, blockchain platforms being used to manage uh, uh, EHS as well as uh, uh, other uh, uh, other data. Um, uh, Shriji, just, uh, just help me out with this. Is blockchain something that Lupin would use in terms of pharmacovigilance, where you uh, have to do uh, you have to do assess and uh, uh, assess the efficacy? Yeah. So I mean, um, conceptually, answer is yes. Yeah. Um, are we using it as of now? No. Uh, but we have, we have you know dabble with blockchain as a technology in few other areas. Um, so wherever you know you need to uh, have that sanctity of the data uh, ingrained into the way we capture, store, and make sure it is replicatable when it is needed. Uh, yeah, I think blockchain is a technology which can bring, uh, bring value. Uh, so yeah, the answer is yes. Back to you, Anika. So, uh, Shriji, while we uh, while we are at the topic, I would I would just uh, ask you a, a last question. That you know, uh, while you have spoken about emerging technologies, what are the opportunities that you see that are that are particularly exciting, and also what are the challenges that you foresee? Uh, plus, you know, with digitization, there is uh, there is a minute risk in safety and uh, security of the platform and the. Uh, medicines involved. How are how how can one ensure that that uh, that safety and uh, safety of the patients and uh, secure uh, data security is taken care of? See, uh, we belong to the humanity which uh, rebelled when we brought trains for transportation, right? Uh, because we thought it is not safe. Um, <clears throat> um, similarly, when computer systems. You know, computers were brought in. Everybody said, oh, this is going to take jobs away from everybody, right? <clears throat> Look at what it has done. You know, it has created millions and millions of jobs which were never there, right? So this is another uh, uh, journey in the evolution of humankind and uh, how technology is going to be used <clears throat> for the benefit of uh, our society, the business, people, patients, everybody, right? So <clears throat> from that point of view, I'm not refuting that there is, uh, there is uh, no issue or there is no uh, thing, nothing to be concerned about and nothing to be uh, taking extra precaution about. Of course, yes, you know, when you bring a train, you need to make sure it's gonna run on the rails and not gonna topple over, right? <clears throat> so that's, that's what it is, you know? Uh, so we look at the positive side of uh, digitize, digitalization and the transformation and how it will help improve the efficiencies and the yields and the cost reductions and new revenue models and you know how to how to uh, make better quality uh, medicines or any product any other sector might be making by making sure that we never uh, take uh, any of the regulatory safety uh, and health guidelines whether it is from FDA or uh, EMA or uh, WHO you know, that is the bedrock foundation of what we do. You know, if we start taking that for granted, uh, yeah, the train is going to topple over. So, so whatever we do, uh, we will make sure uh, that, you know, those uh, guidelines are completely adhered to at the strictest mechanism 
and then we leverage uh, the data and the technologies on on uh, on top of uh, that right so i'll just give you a simple example there you know when we start looking at how do we uh, use technology to improve the yield of a line uh, we actually start with uh, product uh, at not, we do not touch the product quality attributes to start with you know we start with uh, the parameters which impact the speed of the line or you know the the the, the equipments and the motors and you know all those kind of devices around that how do we make them more efficient so that's the that's how you enter that game you know and then uh, at some point we might look at how do you improve the mixing process maybe okay but then again that is not going to be a blindfolded app it is going to be uh, with continuous monitoring of the data, whether it is a temperature or consistency or the flow or whatever, with continuous monitoring of that data uh, and to make sure that we are you know, doing better than what we would have done without the technology, not the other way around. So, so this is an example. Yeah, another one is, you know, if you look at from a patient point, if you there are, uh, let us talk about the respiratory um, category, you know, people use a lot of uh, you know, uh, medicines using their uh, little pumps. Uh, now, how do you help the patient to make sure that the dosages are uh, kept up to date? You know, if, if there is any uh, uh, signals that can be picked up using that devices, the appropriate triggers are sent to the care providers or relatives, especially when it comes to the elderly or, you know, sick people. So that kind of value-added services is what technology brings um, without being an intrusive player to the patient, okay? Uh, there is technology, whenever technology is gonna be used in an intrusive manner, there is gonna be a doctor or a healthcare worker doing that, you know? We are never gonna use technology to be intrusive with the patient without that uh, governance, uh, you know, person being there. So that is how uh, technology is gonna be used by pharma or healthcare or any other player who comes into this field. Um, sure, uh, Weber, if you can add to that, you know, you also, um, uh, you know, the Portia was driven by a lot of uh, uh, remote monitoring of patients during the pandemic. So what kind of challenges did you face then and how are you prepared for them now and, you know, for the future trends, how it's, what are the trends and opportunities that you foresee and you're excited about? I think the <clears throat> one thing, uh, two, three things which you are very excited about and that, of course, not everything has to do with technology. So one of course, uh, <clears throat> pandemic is we believe that COVID is basically the demonetization event for healthcare, uh, not only for uh, <clears throat> not sorry, not only for uh, India but worldwide. So uh, what uh, demonetization did for digital payments is probably what is happening to uh, healthcare uh, and digital healthcare of course post COVID. So that of course is the biggest uh, change which we are seeing and is very very positive, uh, where people, patients, customers, consumers are all very very open and very worried about taking care of their health. So wellness in that sense, uh, preventive care in that sense has become that much more uh, that much more important. So that's one thing which is a very, very big trend and we believe that. Uh, and of course, once you have uh, preventive care, which is which is there and of course, chronic disease, what Sri Hari was talking about in his own case, data-driven, uh, uh, basically uh, chronic disease management, data-driven uh, preventive uh, care, those kind of things are going to be much, much bigger as we go along. And we are seeing massive uh, investment in that space now. And of course, we are very excited about that. Second one, of course, is insurance covering home care. I think home care was, uh, was, a, was, a, was a good service, great service, but COVID was the first home care where, uh, COVID was the first uh, illness where home care got fully covered uh, by insurance. So we believe that once insurance starts covering uh, home care, that again opens up the industry in a, in a significant manner. And third thing, of course, which is very important is that uh, the uses of digital now, the, the change in consumer behavior, as well as the acceptance of digital channels uh, uh, by the ecosystem. I mean, you have uh, Shriji over here from a pharma company, and we have, of course, hospitals and doctors and corporates and everybody, and they're all looking at how they can use digital healthcare to basically support their employees, patients, uh, customers, and so on and so forth. So I think that's the third trend which we are very, very excited about. So I would, I would say that uh, uh, good times ahead uh, for, uh, for healthcare and of course, digital healthcare. 
Sure, and for good time ahead for digital healthcare and healthcare at large, it's very, very like it's very needed. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, uh, thank you for taking out the time. And uh, I'm sure viewers listening to it will be will uh, you know will have uh, some good points to take back. And thank you again, and stay tuned for the next episode of CXO Diaries. Until then, take care, stay safe. <laughs>